guys, what are we gonna do today? Today we're gonna make this mini piano roll stationary scroll. We've done other videos where we've used piano rolls and made them into books and other projects. We've also done mini fabric scrolls and we've even done stationary scrolls. So you can take a look at some of our other videos we've done, but I've tried to take some of my favorite things out of all of those and put them together and we are going to do this fun project today. Let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna need is a piano scroll. And we have these on the shop page, or you may have some. And what I did is I took them off of the wood spool that it's on and I lined it all up. It's about 15 feet long. Folded it in half, folded it in half again. I folded it a few times to make it manageable. And then what I did is I went three and a half inches and cut through the whole pile, three and a half inches, and then I had a four inch piece left. So you will have three pieces. So this is what it's gonna look like when you have it cut. So the reason I cut these to three and a half inch strips is they fit on the wood spools that I have. So you could cut your paper to any size, to any spool or piece that you're wanting to put it on. I'm going to cover the front and the back of this with some white paint. You could use a white gesso. You could just use an off-white paint. I'm doing more of a wash on this, but I want to cover the whole thing. It's gonna give it a little more sturdiness also. So I'm laying this spool out and I'm just gonna start painting it. I'm going to very lightly mist it. I'm gonna start on this side. I hold the end down. I do need to paint that, but just to get it started. I'm doing a light mist. You do not want to coat this with water because the paper is already um, fragile. And I am just going to put a wash over this. Here. And when I start getting it on here, it'll make it lay a tad bit flatter. I'm actually using my DIY paint and I'm just adding some water to it. And some of it's a little more than a wash, and then all I'm gonna do is continue to unroll this. So all I'm gonna do is just continue painting this whole side of this, and let this dry, and then we'll do the other side. So every layer I add to this paper, it gives it a little more strength, so whether it's paint, or other decoupage paper, or even a sealer, it's gonna give the paper just a little bit more strength for you to work with. And it doesn't have to be covered completely. Just I'm just kind of giving it a, a, a bit of a coat over this because you're gonna be covering it with so many other elements that that part's not gonna matter at all. So the front side is dry and I'm gonna do this side now, lightly, just very lightly spray it and cover it the same as I did the other side and let this dry. And then we are gonna add our fun stuff to this. So after both sides of your piano roll is dry, then you want to decide what is going to be the outside with all of your decoupage and transfers and all your beautiful images and what will be the inside where you're going to do all your writing. It doesn't really matter which one, you just um, can make a decision on that. And then the furthest to the left of the roll of paper is what's going to be attached to the spool, which we'll do later. But just to give you an idea, I start with that. Only because when I start laying things down and I just start going, I may get a great idea after you get going a little bit. So the further to the end I get, I'll have more of what I really wanted to do and it'll be showing first at the end of the spool. So I'm actually gonna use all of my scraps. I'm not taking any full sheets that I have, whether it's scraps from transfers or other papers or decoupage papers, whatever I've got. Um, I'm going to be using all my scraps to make this. And this is a really fun way to use up little bits and pieces you've got and make something really unique. So the first thing we're going to do is decoupage our scraps along this huge 15 foot strip we have got there. Use your favorite decoupage medium that you have. The wetter your medium is, the more chance things will wrinkle, but I really don't mind either way. And I am putting my medium on my piano scroll, but then I'll also be putting it on my paper. This is gonna try to roll up a bit because it is wet. That's okay though. And then when you get it laid down, it'll lay kind of flat. 
I use my straight edge a lot for this. Not every square inch of this has to be filled. You just want to put it where it seems perhaps logical, but you can have some open space because transfers are also going to go over this. So you don't need every inch filled in on this. Uh, I will have a lot of it filled in, but not all of it. There may be areas that I don't have decoupage paper and I've just put some stamping and transfers on there. I am just tearing pieces that are just visually appealing to me. So I'm gonna continue doing this down the whole strip and just adding some fun elements. It's kind of like, reminds me of the master board thing. It's just kind of like you're just doing it. And I think it's kind of fun because you're just doing it. You're not, you're not even putting a lot of intense thinking in it. And if it overhangs, I can either leave that or I can trim that off later. So I'm gonna make sure all this is dry and then we are going to finish embellishing this. So since this is dry, I'm gonna start filling in some of my transfer elements. You could add any types of elements you would like if you have other cutouts of pictures or start stamping or, I mean, there's a million things you could add to this. I'm gonna use my Whispering Willow transfer primarily and add a few other scraps in from all of my scraps. So that's what my goal was, is to use scraps. I'm kind of just doing 
what feels visually appealing to me. If you did have a theme, you could go with that and add things in that make sense to what your theme is. I really had fun not having to think so hard on it and just add fun elements to my piece. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna continue on and you can see how I'm adding a few pieces um, and then when we start getting through this you're gonna see how it's kind of going together. I'm just going to fold this back. Now you can see right there where I kind of did that, where it was, it was dry, but it wasn't quite dry. There must have been some under there, or maybe a thicker glob of glue. The two things I found is I'm either going to put something right over that, but if I want the top of this G here, this is what I'm going to do. This took some of the paper off instead. So what I'm gonna do is very carefully add a little bit of glue stick to the back. Lay this down and very carefully, try to get this on here and see if I can peel this up. There we go. And it was very carefully, I had to just lift the edge up, put a little glue stick, lift the edge up and I got that piece to go down. So I'm gonna try it again at the bottom. And if I can start to lift. Sometimes I can get it to work. Sometimes I can't, but you know, we got a little more on there. So if you're tired of losing your stick, there you go. You think I'll notice where it is now? Okay, I need it on both sides, otherwise I will lose it. Because every, you know I'll just turn it upside down the other way. If I lose it now, I'm in trouble.
So right here, I'm just gonna add some fun definitions or words or things like that. And I had a little crack there, so this works perfect to set that there. So I'm still adding my transfers, but in little areas, I'm adding a few little decoupage pieces. Like I said, you can see where this was cracked a bit. So I'm just gonna add that over there, only because I'm thinking of it now. And I also won't forget later what, what, what I was gonna put there. So I'm just going to fill in some fun, interesting pieces to what I have open here. And you can use some more decoupage, add some more transfers, just, you know, any way you would like to add just a few open, any of the open areas that you think needs just a little more interest. This is a good time to get that put on there. So I'm going to figure out what I want for the very ending of this, but I'm not sure yet. So I think we are going to pick all this up. Um, we are going to stamp this and work on the other side. So I've added most of my pieces on here. I'm going to use my um, vintage photo distress oxide and I'm going to go over this. And you can see like where some of the wrinkles are in the paper, which I don't mind that at all. And I'm going to do it carefully. I don't want to tear anything. So what I'm going to do next is use my vintage textures and use this one block of that and just do a little stamping over this. And this is just giving a little more interest. So I'm going to use my Minwax, and it's a polyacrylic crystal clear, and I'm going to be using this on the front to seal this, and it's going to move some of my distressing uh, oxide around. On the back side, because I'm going to be writing on that, I'm going to be using Big Top. Um, it'll seal it, but it won't be such a shine, and it'll be easier to write over it. So this side is dried. I'm starting at um, the end that is closest to the spool. So you can start on either end. This is just the end I'm going to start on. Start stamping little areas to write notes. If you didn't want to do this, you could just use this and just write. And be sure your top is up. And this is the top edge. Some of these aren't going to matter. I mean, some of them I'm going to have them like this. Some I may have like this. And I'm going to be using several different stamps here. These are stamps that I have in my personal collection. This one actually comes with this one and it has some birds and some other label pieces. And this is from Lexi. So if you're interested in that stamp, we'll have a link below. This is one of my darkroom door stamps, but any type of a tag or lines or anything like that could be really fun. And you may find something in your own stash that is really cool. I'm not worried about that being there because that's a lot thinner than this one. 
This one was actually from a calendar, and I thought it was really fun. I've used it a couple different ways. And so what I'm gonna do is just keep mixing each of these pieces up. I can leave a little bit of a space in between if I would like, and just filling this up with areas to put fun little notes. Now this one is really fun. I'm gonna stamp half of this cloche on here. And then I'm going to stamp some lines into the center. Continue doing this, just layering them and doing one and then another and then another and um, just adding all these writing blocks to this till I get to the end. So here is the end. So I'm gonna let this ink set here real quick. We're gonna seal it. And I'm gonna use my big top for this part. If you wanna add any other distressing, this is when I would do it. So I'm gonna use my big top and I'm gonna seal where I stamp. I use my DIY paint. It really changes a little bit of this wash I put on here. I think that looks cool. So I'm just gonna seal this whole thing and let this dry. And then we have one last thing we're gonna do. This is dry. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit more interest here and there. I'm just gonna put a piece of sari silk in here. I took my sari silk and I ironed it out so I have a lot more. What I'm gonna do is rip it in half. It doesn't need to be quite that thick. And then where I get to where they sewed it, I just cut through that and continue to rip. And I'm not gonna fill the whole thing up. I'm, I'm just gonna put some here and there. What I'm using is this maggot. So I am just going to find some little spots and I don't wanna use tons and tons. And I am just gonna add a piece here and there. I'm trying to put it in between some of the areas that I've got here. Right, just so often that you want to put one. You could add different colors, you could add different types of fibers. Um, there's just so much you could do with this. that you wanna make sure your, your glue is pretty well set before you try to roll it all up. Otherwise, you may have it all stuck together. I've ripped a tad bit. I think I'm just gonna take a piece of this and glue it right there. So what I'm gonna do carefully, I wanted these shred a little, so I'm just gonna air to this. So I've got these on here now, and I need to attach this to my spool. I know that the end that is going to start, and you could probably find a lot of different ways you could attach it. You could use um, any sort of a tape or a glue, maybe even a staple gun to put it in there. I am using, it is a roll of canvas tacky or sticky tape. And so it's a piece of canvas, it's a canvas roll, and you can get this at a craft store. And all you do is pull the back off, and it's nice and sticky. To lay this in the center of my spool, and I'm gonna attach it to here, and then I'm just gonna attach it to the spool. And this holds very nicely. And we are just gonna roll him up. Hope you guys thought that was fun and you learned a couple new tricks or tips that you can incorporate into your own projects. You know, I think this would be fun whether you kept it as one 
huge long letter or you added notes or used it as a journal, or you could cut up the pieces, write a special note, make it into a tag and send it off to someone. But I hope you give us a try, but whatever you do, have fun.